welcome back, lovely people. Staying safe and staying well. Ow. <laughs> and the hair is getting back there. Lockdown haircut, mark two. So today on Science Roundup, three stories from outer space. The Hawaiian astronomy project called PanStars spotted this heading towards our sun. They immediately knew it was a visitor from outside our solar system, deep space. So they named it Oumuamua. Big shout out and thank you to Dorothy, my wonderful wife, who spent many years on the island of Hawaii and knows how to say Oumuamua. That's a Hawaiian word for scout or visitor from afar. Of course, very appropriate for the Pacific island chain where people come and visit and go back into the wild blue yonder. It was taken very seriously. We really don't get many visitors from outside of our solar system. Our asteroids all come from an asteroid belt, mainly between Mars and Jupiter and some very far out, but they're all in the solar system. Little guys coming from outer space, you never know what they might be. So SETI, the search for extraterrestrial life, actually officially listened for radio broadcasts in case it was an alien spaceship. So big telescopes were turned towards the object and they saw this, this strange elongated potato shape. They could also resolve its color. It seemed a dark red. Astronomers have now pretty well figured out what it is, how it was made, and why it's red. They now think it was a protoplanet that got too close to its star and was literally stretched and broken apart and sent by extreme forces out as a distant traveler to other solar systems. So why is it red? Well, they think it's covered in frozen gunk from its early life as a planet. How fascinating. So bon voyage, and hopefully we'll see you again another day. So for my second science story, I'd like to thank Tony and Merlin, both who know what's going on with the James Webb Space telescope. The idea was we had a replacement for Hubble, but it's not launched yet. In fact, it's very late and a bit over budget. The James Webb telescope's big difference to Hubble is no way can we go and service it, but it's complex. The idea is fantastic. It's going to be at one of the Lagrange points, which is a very stable orbit, but a long way from Earth. The science they want to do with it is going to be great because it's so big and the resolution will be amazing. But watch this. This is the deployment procedure. It's a giant origami telescope. And in my personal and humble opinion, that's your problem, lady. Imagine what could go wrong. Have you ever tried to change your duvet? I mean, there's so many possibilities for it to jam and not work. Now I understand why it's so delayed. It has to work first time. When it does launch, I really hope it deploys properly, but I don't think it really follows one of the best engineering principles out there. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. And the third story comes from this channel's music composer, the wonderful, the talented, Anthony Del Duca. Anthony not only is a fabulous composer and woodworker, he also is a gifted amateur astronomer and astrophotographer. We were chatting online and replying to you, the viewers' comments about the Atlas Comet. What's the update? And some people have said it's breaking up, but I really didn't get a source for where the information was coming from. So Tony the composer with his telescope took this amazing picture of what Atlas looks like right now. 
There is sadly some evidence that it is breaking up, but fingers crossed there'll be enough of it left come the end of May when it does its orbit around the sun that we can all see it with our naked eyes from planet Earth around about the end of May this year. So as they say, keep your eyes on the skies. That's actually a movie quote, keep your eyes on the skies. It's the last word of a famous science fiction film. Shout out to the first person in the comments who names that movie. So stay safe, stay well, and stay tuned. The truth is out there. Thank <laughs> you.